DC Agar here, author of the non-event principle. I'm well along in my project of creating skirting for this mobile home here. Nothing's getting in. Concrete underneath, plastic lattice from Home Depot up top, hardware mesh. Not between all of that, nothing's getting through. You know, this mobile home had everything going on underneath. Had cats doing their business under there. Uh, creating the basis for a whole ecosystem, insects going after the cat waste. Uh, there were possums crawling under there to die. I found two of their skeletons, cleared that out from under there, along with all of the leaves from mahogany trees and gumbo limbo trees. And, uh, you know, the owner of this property could not blow off all the leaves without it getting under the mobile home and just starting that decomposition and all that went along with it. You know, there was scorpions under there. There's still chiggers under there, because until I put the last panel in place, you know, the critters are not going to stop crawling under there. Feels air conditioned. Feels great under there. I don't blame them. But, uh, the last panel's going in and they are evicted. So, now we're going to see how I did it. I got my techniques all down. And, uh, let's see how I did it. it up to a thinner consistency than this. So what I do first is I butter the side of each concrete object that I'm trying to secure to another. First I just worry about buttering it up with a thin coat, patting it on like this wetting it with the concrete. Then I worry more about keeping on a healthy peanut butter sandwich layer of peanut butter.
Okay, getting my measurements. Length, height. Got it all written down actually. These things are regular shapes because I had to make them fit these uh, pre existing openings. And these openings were all highly irregular. Okay, once you've taken your measurements and you know exactly how big your finished panel is going to be, you've got to cut your lattice. But of course, your lattice isn't going to be exactly as big as your finished panel because you've got to allow for the space that these moldings take up. And then this hardware mesh that you got that we're going to combine with these panels is going to be wrapped around the edges inside of this molding, and that's going to take up a little space too. So, what you got to do is cut the lattice exactly three quarters of an inch smaller than your opening. If you want to get your measuring tape straight on here, you don't need a T-square or nothing. You just look at these triangles, these openings in the lattice, and when you've got your tape lined up, the triangle's all the same, all the way across. So, 15 and a half is where this one's got to be. how you get your marks on this stuff. Pencil seems to work best if you wind up having a race. And you gotta bridge it. You gotta have that mark in the middle. Straight edge on both. Okay, my mark all the way across. This is what I'm going to use to cut my plastic lattice. You can use pretty big saw teeth on that to cut any plastic. It seems to cut through it nice and smooth. Uh, never take the guard off your reciprocating saw. I already got something healing up on this thumb right now. You know, follow all instructions on tools. your fingers. That's how I got my thumb earlier. Be careful. Julio, look at this thing. Oh, I got my hardware cloth, hardware mesh. I'll spread out on the ground here. I hope you can see it on the camera. Now, I'm slap that over and I'm cut the hardware mesh. And it is going to be, um, as it is half inch square hole hardware mesh, it's got to be one and a half holes wider than the pen. Long process with this one. Perfectly lined up. One and a half holes all around the edge. No more, it's just going to wind up exposed on the finished panel where you don't want to see it. I can now relocate to a shadier spot. I can cut off the corners here. I'm going to be folding each edge. You know, and the corners aren't going to really let it fold neatly. You've got to take, take out corners that big, at least that big, so you can fold the edges and get them to meet where they should. <laughs> you think? Oh yeah, these help too. Alright, looking good. Edges all folded. We're ready to cut some molding. Is that a beautiful bougainvillea or what? Now I got the smell of flowers here. And down here I got the smell of a litter box going on. Wafting out from underneath. Shoo. Okay, now we go back to our original opening. I got it propped open with a box there. Got some clamps. Got the mold. Lining up the molding on the top. Clamping it in place. 
getting the edge of the molding flush to the edge of the opening. Go back over here. Clamp that into place. Pretty much clamp it. Take my pencil, go into here and I make my mark. And there's my mark. That's exactly where I gotta cut. Molding. I always like to put the label to the back. And when you get it right, it'll be hanging over about that much. And I'm going to do the side pieces, and I hold it up to the inside edge of the top molding, butt it up against the bottom one, and I draw my pencil marks. And this is how you got to do these custom fit panels. Same thing on the other side. I got one entire panel, and I don't know how to get it all in one screenshot. This thing is just a monster. A moment of truth. Fits better this way. Got it. Leave that up against there until I'm ready to make the rounds and screw them all on. Stop the traffic in and out. Yeehaw. A lot of work. A lot of work. Lay yourself out some towels for this last step. Or any step where you got to get down on the ground. Okay. Got a wood drill bit in here. I'm going to drill through this uh, panel, both the wood and the plastic with the wood drill bit. I'm going to start a hole for our securement. Hammer drill setting not necessary. Very noisy. Gotta drill it straight. The bit was getting a little dull. Okay, gotta change bits. The next bit I'm gonna use is a concrete drill bit. Go through the concrete behind it, and its diameter more precisely matches that of the bolt that I'm gonna use to secure this, this gate. Got to drill straight now. Penetrate it all the way. The purpose of this uh, much larger concrete drill bit is to countersink the hole in the concrete from the other side. I'm going to blow the dust out of the hole.
Let's see how this works. Yeah, finally got it through. bolt protrudes out the hole. That's how it's going to be secured. However, the bolt's got to be cemented in place. The way to cement it in place is tricky. Got a wet sponge here, and I'm going to douse the concrete. About three times in two minutes, just like that. Get the concrete good and soaked. Okay, the concrete made a lot of Rice Krispies noises as the water was soaking in and the air was escaping out of the concrete. You know, when you listen real close, sounds like Rice Krispies. So, what I've got here is regular stucco cement, just sand mix basically, and I've got some unsanded uh, flooring thin set, you know, and it's got very specific purposes, uh, unsanded thin set, but uh, for in flooring, but in this case, I'm going to use it to paint my bolt paint it all over this bolt, the back of this, where I want it to be cemented because that's going to get the best bond with the rest of the concrete. And then I'm going to take the hole, I'm going to push this stuff through the hole that the bolt's going to go through. And it's like cookie dough, cake batter. I'm just going to see it come through the hole. So. Ew. Okay. Now I've pushed the bolt through the hole and it's well coated. I'm going to take some sand mix. I'm going to push that in behind to fill the voids. Because the unsanded can only be painted on in a layer 1 8 inch thick because of its shrinkage factor. You know, the sand mix with the sand in it has got less of a shrinkage factor, and that's why it's perfectly good to uh, fill larger voids. Touch that up, and now my bolt is cemented in there. I've got to handle it very carefully. That actually wasn't very careful. Luckily, the bolt was tight in there. Didn't move on. Uh, didn't move a millimeter. Okay, now I'm going to take a wet sponge and clean off the threads of my bolt because I don't need any sand grains on the end of the bolt while I'm trying to thread on my fastener. fastener. I'm going to feel the back side of the cemented burn here. I've got the, the bolt cement it in, and as I'm feeling the back, it's perfectly smooth, the concrete's not disturbed by my careless letting go of this thing. I'm going to take this right here, I got this ready, I'm going to very carefully feed the bolt back through this panel. got it protruding again like it needs to be. Once again I gotta clean off the end of the threads because no sand or it's gonna catch. I don't need the bolt uh, to spin freely. I'm gonna just connect it to the concrete. I gotta get this started ever so carefully. And now I get it tighter. 
usually it'll just crank down a little bit of friction that holds the bolt in the hole. We'll keep the bolt from turning on you, spinning freely inside the concrete that you just set it in. Now it cures that way. Uh, tomorrow, I'll come by and give it a splash of water because tomorrow it won't be uh, disturbable by a splash of water. Right now it will be. I mean, you sure can't gush it with the hose. But tomorrow it will benefit from staying wet, from not baking white in the uh, sun, just baking white in the air. The concrete benefits from staying wet up to three days while it is completely curing. When you're all done, when you're all done and you've peeled off your tattered latex gloves and your hands are being tried for all the concrete they're coming in contact with, a splash of vinegar will neutralize that concrete residue.